Hello guys, Møydal here. Today's video will feature some of the most broken and overpowered tailoring items from Classic World of Warcraft. Some are broken for certain classes during leveling, some are genius as pre-rate best in slot gear, and heck, some will be best all the way to next Ramas once they're released. For those requiring rare or epic patterns, I'll be showing where to get the patterns, and for all the items, I've also listed the estimated material cost based on a snapshot of auction house prices. Before getting to the individual pieces of gear, I'll be giving a short overview of the tailoring profession. You can find timestamps in the description if you want to jump ahead to the list immediately. So, the tailoring profession is one of nine primary professions in Classic World of Warcraft. It allows you to craft all kinds of cloth gear as well as bags and shirts. It is usually chosen by the cloth wearing classes Priest, Mage and Warlock. As a tailor, you can craft a small handful of cloaks useful for non-spellcasters, but nothing mention worthy. Just like you won't be training blacksmithing as a mage, you probably won't be going tailoring as a warrior either. Tailoring is often paired with enchanting as the second primary profession since you're able to craft a lot of inexpensive greens, which can then be disenchanted. The nice thing about tailoring though is the fact that you have a lot of freedom as to which other profession to take. As a leather worker, you want to have skinning. As a blacksmith or engineer, mining is king, and for alchemy, herbalism is your friend. Tailoring mostly just requires cloth such as linen cloth, wool cloth, etc. to skill up, which you get when you are out killing regular mobs in the world. A downside to tailoring, in my opinion, is the fact that you can specialize further inside the profession, which could be awesome. As a blacksmith, you can choose to become an armor or weaponsmith, and leatherworkers pick between dragon scale, elemental, and tribal leatherworking. I guess the reason tailoring doesn't allow this is due to the lack of variety and flavor of cloth gear in general. You pretty much only want intellect and plus damage or healing as a cloth wearer, while druid leatherworkers, for example, need agility, strength, and or defensive stats if they are feral, and intellect and spell damage if they are boomkin. God forgive you for your sins. It's still a cool profession and great to have while leveling, so you can craft power pieces of gear for yourself and others. For my own mage in classic, I've only chosen to use skinning during leveling though to avoid downtime and extra cost, but with that being said, I think tailoring is probably among the most inexpensive professions to level up, aside from the gathering and secondary professions. I'm keeping a lot of the cloth I get in my bank and plan on skilling up tailoring to 300 once I reach 60. Now let's look at some of the biggest reasons why tailors aren't so high demand. The first item on today's list is Rope of Winter Night, which requires 285 skill points in tailoring to craft. It is a level 52 chest piece that increases the damage done by your shadow and frost spells by up to 40, which is a huge amount. The pattern to make the Rope of Winter Night drops only from the elite Kobold Mage Weavers in Winter Spring with a low percent chance, but it's much easier to get than some of the upcoming epic patterns, and that's one of the benefits of this exact rope. The mats aren't unreasonably expensive either, so it's certainly a very realistic and powerful pre raid choice for Warlocks and Mages, since they're using Shadow and Frost spells respectively. It's not too often you see increased spell damage from two different types of magic schools on a single item, so the Rope of Winter Night is pretty cool in that way, and the name is also quite dope. For Majors, the Rope of Winter Night is only outshined as a pre raid item by the level 57 epic Rope of the Archmage. In fact, this rope is so good it's used all the way through Blackwing Lair as the best chess piece. It has the same amount of intellect as Rope of the Winter Night and 40 increased spell damage with all your spells. But here is where it stands out and makes it worth pursuing for the unrelenting min maxers. The Rope of the Archmage also provides an increased 1% critical strike chance with spells and the all use effect of restoring between 375 and 625 mana with a cooldown of 5 minutes. It isn't a mind-blowing amount, a superior mana potion will give you between 900 and 1500 mana, but the cooldown is rather short and it's certainly nice to have, especially early on when people aren't as geared and the boss fights take longer time, so you're more prone to running out of mana. The cooldown isn't shared with any other from my research, which is great, and all in all, the Rope of Archmage is amazing. The pattern to craft the drops from the Firebrand Pyromancers in Lower Black Rock Spire with a 10% chance, which is surprisingly high. There seems to be only a couple of the Pyromancers, however, so don't expect to get the pattern in a single one. One thing worth noting about the Rope of the Archmage is that it is bound on pickup, meaning you need to be a tailor and craft it yourself if you want to use it. The pattern can be bought from the auction house, but the actual rope cannot. The materials can be quite costly. Most notably, you need 10 of each of the different elemental essences, fire, water, water, earth and wind. I plan on getting this rope myself on my mage and farming the essences. Now for a much lower level item that I had to include. 
It's the Spider Silk Boots, the first rare quality piece of gear you learn to craft as a tailor at 125 skill points from your regular trainers. They aren't broken like you'll be going into next wearing those, but they're the first blue color cloth boots available and most definitely very strong for a spellcaster in their 20s, with the stamina, intellect and spirit they provide. The Spider Silk Boots have somewhat legendary status in my eyes since being able to craft a rare quality item for the first time is so epic, especially at lower levels. Blacksmiths have the shining silver breastplate and leather workers the deviate scale belt which requires a pattern as well as the toughened leather gloves. I'm sure Blizzard made a cognizant design choice in creating those items. Learning how to craft them really makes you feel rewarded. And now all that time spent leveling up your profession is suddenly very worth it. For the level, the mats might be slightly expensive, but it's not something that's going to ruin you if you buy them off the auction house. The spider silk should be easily acquired from lots of different spiders around the world if you grind them for a bit, and the medium leather and bolt of silk cloth are trivial to get. The fourth featured item is the level 45 Dreamweave circlet of the Dreamweave set, which also includes a chest piece and a set of gloves. The gloves are hugely strong and, to a lesser degree, the chest piece as well, but I'd still argue the headpiece is the strongest of them all, at least as a pre-rate item. It gives plus 21 increased damage and healing to your spells and 12 spirit along with 10 intellect. The Dreamweave circlet is astonishingly easy and inexpensive to get. I bought it myself for a mere 5 gold off the auction house with my mage, so you can imagine and the mats are really simple, nothing too fancy. You're taught how to craft it from an appropriate tailoring trainer at 250 skill points. The affordability of the Dreamweave circlet is what makes it such an attractive item in my opinion, and I would recommend almost every spellcaster to pick it up as soon as possible, once you reach the required level to use it. Sure, as an engineer you got the green lens which can provide more increased spell damage, and you might get lucky with an of Frozen Wrath or of Shadow Wrath high level green, but the Dreamweave circlet is very close in line as the best pre rate headpiece for a lot of the spellcasters. I still don't know at what patch the cutoff is for which items are in the game and which aren't. Here I'm referring to items that were not in vanilla wow at launch back in the day i think the cutoff is at patch 1-3 since i know sumra's vexing cane which was introduced in that patch originally is available in classic right now the reason i'm wondering all this is that the crimson felt hat from magistrate bartzelas in stratholm was added in patch 1-4 and that is an item that's slightly superior to dreamweave circlet i'm quite sure it isn't available in phase one though and it isn't that much better than the circlet anyways as the Warlock's equivalent to the Mage's Rope of the Archmage, we've got Rope of the Void. It's a level 57 epic chest piece with plus 14 stamina, plus 46 spell damage and the all use effect of healing your pet for somewhere between 450 and 750 HP. It is not nearly as good as the Rope of the Archmage in my opinion. It provides no increased critical strike chance with spells, and the on use effect is useless in weights, since you'll have your demon sacrificed in most cases anyways. Still, the Rope of the Void is pre rate best in slot for Warlocks for Phase 1, slightly etching out Rope of Winter Night, and that's the reason it made the list. If it's worth going for over the Winter Night Rope, however, I'd say definitely not unless you're looking to min max or really want to flex your in game wealth. The pattern is considerably harder to get, seeing how it drops from the final boss of Scholarman's Darkmaster Gandling with an unimpressive 7% chance, and the mats are probably 2-3 to three times more expensive compared to Rope of Winter Night. For example, you need 40 pieces of felt cloth and 20 demonic runes which you will have to farm yourself since they are bound on pickup. If you have an abundance of gold, sure, go ahead and craft the Rope of the Void and let everyone else know who's boss. All you're paying for is the brand, and if that's how you like to roll, do it. You get much more bang for your buck with the other rope however. Like with the mage rope, this one is also bound on pickup so there's no buying it off the auction house. I've got another treat for the warlocks with the whole shadow weave set which includes boots, gloves, pants, rope, shoulders and mask. I'm going to call it the set even though it doesn't provide any set bonuses, but the items all share the same name. The levels range from 37 to 44, and common for all of them is the increased shadow spell damage they provide. Even though I have never leveled a warlock to 60 in vanilla, I have heard of and know how sought after the shadow weave items are for anyone playing the class. If you wear the whole set, you get a total increase of up to 114 damage with your shadow spells, which is monumental, and I can only imagine how positive of an impact that would have on your leveling speed. The shadow weave items are taught to you by a special master shadow weave trainer, one of which is found in the Undercity and the other in Stormwind. The lowest level item requires 210 skill points to learn how to craft, and the highest level 245. The notable materials required to craft the gear are varying amounts of bolts of mage weave and shadow silk. A 
single item requires two pieces of thick leather as well, but shadow silk is the only mat you should really care about. If you don't feel like buying it from the auction house, it drops from level 35 spiders and above. The lowest levels are found in Dust Wallow Marsh and Swamp of Sorrows. The level 44 Shadow Weave Mask is perhaps the most noteworthy item of the set. It gives plus 10 intellect and plus 24 shadow spell damage, making it arguably better than the Dreamweave Circlet, which is pretty crazy. Absolutely no one will look weird at you for bringing the Shadow Weave Mask into the Molten Core, which is funny considering it's a level 44 green, but there are many items like that in Classic. Gloves of Spellmastery is up next. It's a set of epic level 57 gloves, only usable by priests, mages and warlocks. The stats are 10 intellect, 8 spirit and an increased 2% critical strike chance with spells. They're actually terrible for shadow priests since you aren't relying on crits whatsoever, but they're great for the other two classes. Both have talents which increase your critical strike damage bonus with spells such as Shadow Bolt and Frost Bolt, Ruin for warlocks and Ice Shards for frost mages. This makes gear with improved crit chance very worth chasing and increased 2% from Gloves of Spellmastery is equal to the same amount of crit you get from around 120 intellect at level 60. I'm not sure how you would compare improved spell crit chance with increased spell damage. The Hands of Power from Quartermaster Secrets in Lower Blackrock Spire are listed as pre-rate best in slot for Warlocks and Mages and they provide plus 26 spell damage. I would be very surprised if the Gloves of Spellmastery weren't better, especially considering the increased critical strike damage talents, but I honestly don't know. The reason I included the gloves is that they're a cool item in my opinion with the 2% increased crit and I'm absolutely certain they are very powerful in weights. The pattern used to craft the gloves drop from weight bosses such as Ragnaros and Anuxia similar to the plans for the Lionheart helm for example. The mats are expensive. You need 10 pieces of mooncloth and 10 ghost dye to name two. For our third class specific robe of the video we have the priestess True Faith Westmans. It's a genius chess piece with plus 73 healing power. It restores you 6 mana every 5th second and it reduces the cooldown of your fate ability by 2 seconds. I'm not sure how often you use fate as a healer but the 73 healing power alone makes the True Faith Westmans top tier. I believe it's first replaced by the ropes of the Guardian Saint from Vanquish the Unyielding in AQ40 so you'll be keeping it for a long time. It's bound on pickup meaning you'll be crafting it yourself and the alternative for non-tailors and classes other than and priest are the ropes of the exalted from Baron Riven there in Stratholm. That's also a really powerful rope with plus 68 healing power and a bit of spirit and intellect, not lacking too far behind from the True Faith Westmans. That's the deal with a lot of those items. Often you will have other cheaper and more easily available alternatives that are just a little bit worse. In my opinion it's great since it means you don't have to go all in on getting the absolute best pieces of gear. You can if you want but it's definitely not required for the vast majority of raiding guilds. The pattern for the True Faith Westmans drop from Balnazar at the end of the living part of Stratholm. The drop chance is 8% it would seem and the mats are, quite naturally, on the expensive end. You need 4 Righteous Orbs which are also used for the Crusader enchant and are thus in high demand. You also need Mooncloth and other stuff but compared to some of the items from my Broken Blacksmithing Items video it's not too bad. If I were to compare the 3 class specific ropes overall, Rope of the Archmage, Rope of the Void and True Faith Westmans, I would probably say Rope of the Archmage is the best also taking into consideration how much easier it is to get the pattern. True Faith Westmans is a close second and due to the underwhelming on use effect of Rope of the Void I would rank it last. It's still great don't get me wrong and the plus 46 spell power is amazing. I hope you're not getting tired of hearing me say the word rope since the level 33 rope of power is coming up now. Not to my knowledge in family with the orb of power or the previously mentioned hands of power the Robe of Power requires 190 skill points in tailoring to craft and no pattern to learn. It's a great chess piece for its 14 increased spell and healing power as well as the 12th intellect and 8th spirit. It's bound on pickup actually and thus exclusive to tailors. The noteworthy mats are two of each of the different elements. Elemental Earth, Water, Fire and Air. Especially Elemental Fire and Elemental Earth later down the line can get quite expensive. At lower levels, gear with increased spell damage is very scarce so any piece you can get is awesome. I haven't spoken about the looks of any of the items yet but the Robe of Power is probably a 7 or 8 out of 10. At level 35, Blizzard actually decided to put in another rare quality chess piece. Rope of the Magi, which is a world drop and even better than Rope of Power. It has 22 spell damage instead of 14. That shouldn't scare you away from the crafted item though. It's the reliable choice and likely to be more affordable. 
Now for the level 60 epic flare call leggings. You get the pattern to craft them from the Furium Brotherhood Quartermaster Lockfoss Dark Bargainer in Black Rock Depths. You need revered status with the Brotherhood to buy it and it's the same vendor that sells the plans to create gear such as Nightfall. I think the flare call leggings are really quite underrated. They provide 43 increased spell damage which is a lot and the stamina and fire resistance is super nice for increased survivability in the Molten Core and Onyxius layer. They compare very well to the tier 1 Arcanist leggings and even the Neverwind pants from Ragnaros. The flare call leggings is a cool item to have. They really shine in encounters where fire resistance and health is important. But disregarding that, they are still more than viable. Since they are bind on equip, you don't have to craft them yourself, meaning you could buy them pre raid where they would probably be best in slot. If you want to grind Furion Brotherhood reputation yourself, going into the Molten Core and getting materials such as Fire Recall and Lava Core is by far your best bet. They can be turned in for reputation to get you from all to Exalted. Prior to that, you can turn in stuff such as Incendosaur Scale and Dark Iron Residue. The mats for the Flare Core leggings are, like with just about every epic crafted item, heavy. At the beginning of Classic's life cycle, Fiery Core and Lava Core will be very expensive on the auction house, which is also why I don't find it particularly feasible to get reputation through board materials. Go to MC with your guild and hopefully you'll bestow some of them. Alternatively, you could set up a puck and reserve the rare quality sellables. We'll close the show in a grandiose fashion with lots of fireworks. In this case, the fireworks are the Bloodvine set, available from Phase 4 in Classic with the release of Solgorub. And it's a banger like few other. The set includes the Bloodvine vest, leggings and boots. Each item has the same stats in varying amounts intellect, spell damage and increased hit chance. The set bonus increases your spell critical strike chance by 2% as if the individual pieces of gear weren't strong enough on their own. Importantly, the set bonus only benefits tailors although you don't need to be a tailor to use the gear. Drop everything you're carrying once this sets become available. As a spellcaster it will last you until next Ramas. Rope of the Archmage, GTFO. Rope of the Void, be gone. The Bloodvine items will trump it all. It's similar to the Devil Saw set but on another level. They are all rare quality level 60 BOE items. The patterns to craft them are bought from a Sandalar tribe vendor on the Jumba Isle. The boots require friendly reputation, the leggings honored and the vest revered. You get reputation by doing Sulker Rub and turning in different coins and beat use to the Sandalar tribe trolls. The most important material used to craft the Bloodvine items is the herb from which they have their name, Bloodvine. It can be acquired from different herbs in CG once you have the item Blood Scythe or however that's pronounced which drops in the instance. Furthermore, Bloodvine will also drop occasionally from the mobs themselves within Silkerweb. From my experience playing on private servers, the materials are quite costly and each of the individual Bloodvine items will cost a couple hundred gold. The investment will be well worth it though. Can you imagine the Bloodvine set being available at launch? That would mean you'd have your chest, legs and boots item slots covered until the very last phase with Nexramas. That would be pretty boring. Before I round off the video, I wanted to include some honorable mentions, the first of which is the Frost Weave set. It's similar to the Shadow Weave set for Warlocks, with increased frost damage instead of shadow, making it ideal for frost mages during leveling. The reason it didn't make the actual list is because it only has 4 items, 2 of which is a chest piece, and the patterns are world drops, so they're more difficult to acquire. For the Fire Mages, the Cindercloth set is available. With items ranging from 40 to 51, they provide increased fire damage. The the cloth cloak is special since it's required to craft the Onyxia scale cloak used during the fight with Nefarian in Blackwing Lair. Blizzard made sure to add something for everyone with gear with increased spell damage from all those different schools of magic. I wanted to include the Inferno gloves as well, maybe for personal reasons more than anything else. On the private server Lightbringer I was playing a fire mage and looking for any cool gear, so I got the Inferno gloves which have plus 33 fire spell damage. If fire was viable in Molten Core and Onyxia's lair, they would be really strong. Finally, we have the Warlock equipment equivalent Felcloth gloves which give an added 33 shadow spell damage. The pattern for those drop in diamond just like the pattern for the inferno gloves and they're much more viable. That's it guys, thanks a lot for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you agree with the items I included or have some of your own I missed that you really like. With the success of my broken blacksmithing items video, I wanted to make another one for another profession and since I'm playing a mage in classic at the moment, Tailoring was the obvious choice. If you want to see a similar video made for leatherworking or even engineering perhaps, feel free to leave a comment. Take care everybody!